Hi everybody. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to determine if your objects have changed using XML Mirror. Here's an example here I just built, and I'll show you how I built it. It's real simple. I'm just going to say uh, services to there, right there. If I you know do that now, if I just hit save, notice it goes back, and then if I change it back, it'll go to enabled. Okay, so that's just a way to uh, an easy way to tell if your objects have changed and I'll show you how I built it using XML mirror so what we're gonna do is go over here first let me rename really quickly the uh, the one I just showed you I just wanna I wanna keep the one I just built but I'm gonna build one anyway build another one but I just wanna uh, we'll just call this dot old or something for a second it's not really old but okay and now we're going to just go over to this is XML Mirror. It's on GitHub, and I'll put the link in the video description. We're just going to be, cr be creating a writer. We don't need a reader at this point. I'm going to be sp selecting my object library.dll, which is just, I will show you in this property right here. Here's my business objects. This is all the tables in my database. Every table with datatier.net, it creates a data class and a business class so it uses partial classes and we're going to be using the project is what I'm uh, just showing you it's got a bunch of properties and I'm only actually needing this for one field so this is kind of overkill but that's okay I just wanted to demo if any of these objects change you have an easy way to tell if there's any changes so what we're going to do is uh, our target class is going to be project so that is business objects dot project Notice it puts in the writer name of Projects Writer. You can change that if you want. The namespace, I already have some of those created, so we'll just create one. I'll just get a, oops, wrong one. I meant to go to our Writers folder. Just copy the namespace I want. I usually just create an XML, do something kind of like this. And then now our output folder, I'm going to go back over to my writers and say copy full path and then just hit view and build and our writer was created so that's pretty simple I think now I'm going to show you in this one let me go over here and just go to include all files first I'm gonna oops I wanted to I already had that on so I'll turn that back on I'm gonna exclude this from project and I'm gonna include this one and we're gonna get a couple of errors and the errors I'll show you just because it's this has some child properties this this project class like collections and I don't need them for this video so I'm not gonna create it but if you wanted to you could go over to XML mirror and create your child writers and it would work the same thing except for with the collection you export a list so here you would just have to do something like yeah, here it has the, here's the export list so it would it, the code is all stubbed out for you the only thing missing is your reference it would actually be the references set writer that's what the object is called but we don't need that we're going to go ahead and close it and there's quite a few of them because I don't need the uh, I don't need the children for this I really just wanted to show you a demo so let me go down here's another one the databases a project can have one or more databases and then let's see there's just a kind of Instead of going through all these errors, here's the enumerations because a project has an enumerations collection. We don't need that for this purpose. And let's see if there's any others. This is just everything that your writer basically writes out. And I think that's everything, but we'll see. Wait, I just took off one too many comments. Okay, let me see if that builds. Because I've got it, I've got datatier.net running. No? This app here has a, a reference on it, maybe. Let me just try again. Okay, if there was just a reference there. So I can actually delete this one. They're the same. That's all I did. Okay, so now 
the only thing I need I want to show you is how I go to my form and just uh, let me close all this I don't need them and, oops go to my client folder I've got a control called the blazer data services controls that's the control I was just showing you I'm just gonna go to the code we don't need the designer open and then there's a few places here I'm just gonna search for project writer and I want to be in the current document to search for a writer in the current document of course there's gonna be extra okay here's one so this is in the let me go to the setup method first this is the first thing the the control actually the form that that hosts this control calls this but another control uh, the the project wizard control is the real parent I think but basically it passes in this project and all I do here is create an instance of the projects writer and I serialize out just a, it's a string so it just it exports this and then in my um, there's a method called on text change it's an event on text changed I update this and go to my UI enable method create another instance of the projects writer I export the current value and then I just enable the save button if as long as the two strings are different the save button becomes enabled and then the last thing I do in the on save event here it is I say I serialized it out again so that way we have the current value serialized so if there's any changes in the future the save button will become enabled again so that was my short video using XML mirror to uh, help you tell if there's any changes let me know if you find that useful and if you have any questions let me know thanks for watching